und nun noch einige Aufnahmen vom Abschuss und Flug des Geräts FZG 76. The Nazis launched thousands of V-1 cruise missiles and V-2 ballistic missiles at London during the last years of World War II. Part of Hitler's grand vision of using Wunderwaffe in an attempt to turn the tide of war, these vengeance weapons were only able to inflict localised damage. At best, they did very little to help Germany's war effort and at worst pulled critical resources away from the manufacture of much needed tanks and planes. The Nazi regime had another card up its sleeve, however, one which, as Churchill would later say, could have seen London as shattered as Berlin. This card was the attempt to build the largest gun the world had ever seen, the V3 cannon. Located in the chalk hills in the Calais region of France and aimed directly at London, the V3 was intended to be a 50-barrel, multi-charge gun complex capable of firing a shell the 100 miles to London. With a theoretical ability to fire 600 shells per hour, London could have been reduced to ruins. In March 1918, during the dying months of World War I, Germany first fielded the massive Kaiser Wilhelm gun, aka the Paris gun. Manned by a crew of 80 sailors due to their experience in operating large caliber naval guns, these weapons had the ability to lob a 106 kilogram shell 81 miles into the heart of Paris. Around 350 shells were fired at Paris, killing an estimated 250 people. In response, the French poured resources into developing a weapon that could avenge these losses, settling on a multi-charge gun. The advantages of this approach were clear. The Paris gun used one massive charge which created extreme pressures in the barrel resulting in frequent repairs. These took the gun out of action allowing the enemy to regroup without threat. With a multi-charge weapon, many smaller charges are used to accelerate the shell, meaning the strain at any one point in the barrel is minimised. This greatly reduced maintenance allowing longer periods of sustained bombardment. Although never built, the French plans were uncovered by German engineer August Kunders after he found the patent in Nazi-occupied Paris in 1942. After testing of a model, he convinced Albert Speer, the Nazi war production minister, to develop the weapon further, which Hitler agreed to. And so construction began. In 1943, up to 5,000 men, including many slave labourers, began excavating the chalk hill by hand. The plan was to build five tunnels, each containing ten guns. Each barrel was intended to be 130 metres long and inclined at 50 degrees. At regular intervals perpendicular to the barrel, there are pairs of solid rocket booster charges. If precisely timed, these would accelerate the projectile to roughly 1500 metres a second, or 3,300 miles an hour. Hitler's plan was to rain high explosive shells down on London at over four times the speed of sound. Unsurprisingly, the technical challenges were massive and took time to perfect, sucking yet more resources away from the war effort. The biggest problem faced by the German engineers was the precise timing of the solid rocket charges. Test of a prototype gun overseen by Kunders in a coastal town in Poland in 1943 clearly highlighted these issues. In these tests, the shells failed to reach the desired velocity due to mistiming of the charges along the barrel, which if replicated on the V3 would result in the shells falling far short of London. Little is known as to the exact mechanics of how the Nazi engineers hoped to resolve this issue, with electrical timing being a possibility. Whatever was planned, the Nazis were fast running out of time to get the weapon up and running. For such an ambitious weapon, its destruction was swift and total. French spies almost immediately alerted the Allies to the large-scale construction. Although the Allies did not know what was being built, one theory that the tunnels were to launch V-2 missiles, they were not going to wait to find out. In November 1943, the Allies launched an aerial raid on the complex, causing minimal damage. 
This was followed by the Lancaster bombers of RAF 617 Squadron, the Dam Busters, which launched a raid with 12,000 pound Tallboy bombs on July the 6th, 1944. This raid collapsed part of the complex burying 300 workers alive. Such was the Allies' persistence to completely level the area. The US Navy planned a mission codenamed Operation Aphrodite to use a radio-controlled B-24 Liberator bomber packed with explosives as a primitive guided missile. Due to the limited technology of the time, the radio-controlled Liberators required two pilots on board for takeoff who would then bail out to safety. The B-24 would then be controlled by a following aircraft. On the 12th of August 1944, the explosive-laden plane was piloted by Joseph P. Kennedy Jr., the older brother of future US President JFK. Shortly after takeoff over Blythburgh in Suffolk, England, the plane exploded, instantly killing Kennedy and his co-pilot. Even if the mission was a success, however, the Germans had already given up on construction the month prior as the Allies were rapidly advancing towards the area post-D-Day. The Canadian Army reached the largely destroyed site on the 5th of September 1944. The British, taken no chances that the guns could be completed and placed into operation, perhaps by a rogue French regime, detonated Hitler's V3 with 35 tonnes of explosives. Twice. Thanks for watching this episode of How To History. Please like and subscribe for more.